Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to our channel once again. If you're just seeing our channel for the first time, this is Jack Bauer with your days. And on this channel, we provide relevant immigration opportunity or relocation opportunity to Canada where we reside and to other beautiful European countries where you are going to have an amazing relocation experience. Okay, so today, another exciting opportunity is coming your way. So stick to this video to the end, okay? Lovers of Canada, I have another exciting opportunity for you to use to immigrate or relocate to Canada. So whether you have a job in Canada, there's an opportunity for you to use to relocate to Canada with a permanent residence opportunity. Now, whether you do not have a job, there is also another opportunity for you that you can also use to relocate to Canada. And also, it is also promising a permanent residence opportunity for you and your family. Okay. So either of the options, any of the options I'm going to talk about today, promise permanent residence opportunity for either you or your family. So Stick to this video, like I said, you cannot afford not to watch it to the end, okay? Now, I'm talking about the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. Now, the province of Saskatchewan have different permanent residence opportunity for both skilled professional and unskilled professional. Those who already have secured employment opportunity in Saskatchewan or those who are yet to secure employment opportunity in Saskatchewan. So, they have different pathway for you to use to relocate to Canada. And that is the opportunity that I'll be talking about today. Different opportunity that you can use to relocate to Canada, whether you have secured a job or whether you are yet to secure a job. Each of these opportunity, you have to be willing to live permanently in Saskatchewan. So whether you have, we have a job already or whether you are a skilled professional, whether you are looking to get a job in Saskatchewan, Either of the opportunities, you have to be willing to permanently reside in Saskatchewan. And that is the opportunity that I want to quickly talk about today, okay? So stick to this channel. Let me quickly, you know, show you the details about each of these opportunity and how you can make your application, the necessary document that you, can, you need to uh, make available and how you can submit your applications to be nominated for the permanent residence opportunity in the province of Saskatchewan. So, like I already said, this is the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program platform, the website. Of course, you will always find it on the video description to, for you to be able to, you know, gather extensive information regarding any of the platform or any of the areas in which you want to focus your interest in, okay? Now, the, Saska the overview, the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program is a way to immigrate to Canada through the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program, or what is called SINP Program the, in the province of Saskatchewan. Now, the benefit is this. It invites residents application from non-Canadian who want to make Saskatchewan their home, nominate successful applicant to the federal government. So the province of, of, of Saskatchewan, depending on the, uh, the pathway that you want to follow, when you are successful, they will be the one to nominate your candidacy to the federal government for them to consider you as a permanent resident residing in Saskatchewan. Now, that is the overview about the uh, about the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. Now, let's quickly look at the different pathway that you can use to immigrate to uh, Canada, the province of Saskatchewan. Now, they have different opportunity, of course. They have... Uh, uh, Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. They have entrepreneur category, foreign graduate uh, student. Th that is for those who are, who are foreign graduates. And then, uh, but this is particularly talking about those who are residing in Saskatchewan already, who are foreign graduates that are already residing in Saskatchewan or you know or in Canada. Okay. Then we have expression of interest system for international skilled worker. This is the one I'm talking about that stated that. Whether you do, I mean, if you do not have a job, you can also submit what is called an expression of interest to reside in the province of Saskatchewan and to practice your trade or your profession in Saskatchewan. That is what I'm talking about. I'll be showing to you the details of each one of them shortly. Okay. And we have 
skilled international workers, profession in demand. There are some professions that are in demand in the province of Saskatchewan. So if your profession falls between this, um, uh, this profession that are in demand in the province of Saskatchewan, you can also apply for the permanent residence opportunity. And then there is another one that is called in-demand occupation and express entry requirement. That is for um, on, on, on skill works like carpenter, like um, uh, like plumbers and the likes. So that is the uh, I mean that that's that kind of jobs fall under this in-demand occupation and express entry requirement. And of course. Uh, under the same professions, we have um, the skilled international workers professions in demand. Of course, we you can also see uh, mechanic in, uh, in there as well and different types of profession, okay? However, there are some excluded profession that they have decided that they have more than enough of these skilled set professionals in this province of Saskatchewan. So if your profession falls in between that, you do not, you, do, you are not eligible to apply. I will show you some of the professionals that have already been excluded from some of these different pathways that I'm talking about, okay? So stick with me. Now, let's quickly start with the expressions of interest system for international skilled workers, those who do not need to have a job before they can uh, move to Canada. Now, the expression of interest system for international skilled workers, okay? And, and here, of course, like I said, there are excluded occupation, okay? So you can find the excluded occupation list here if you want to check it yourself, but I will show to you some brief um, excluded occupation that has been you know, taken away from those who do, I mean, who are not eligible to apply for this. So don't forget this, you do not require, you do not need to have a job yet in Canada, particularly the province of, of Saskatchewan before you can apply to this one. Now. Let's look at how we can create an expression of interest. The first thing that you need to do is to create an expression of interest. Now, creating an expression of interest does not automatically mean that uh, you are applying for permanent residence opportunity. It only, it only means that uh, you, are submitting, you are submitting an, an interest stating that you want to be considered for nomination for the permanent residence opportunity. And based on the profile that you submit to this uh, program, that is what they will use to rank your application. And mind you, you must at least, your profile must at least score 60 points upward before you can be um, nominated for the next phase, which is the permanent residence opportunity for them to provide you work permit and every other information to be given to you. So let's quickly take a brief look at some of these information, particularly for this one that just require that you submit an expression of interest without you already securing a job in the province of Saskatchewan. So as you see here, submitting an expression of interest as an international skilled worker does not constitute an application under the permanent residence opportunity. Completing an online expression of in interest form is just one step before applying for the permanent residence opportunity, which allow you to indicate your interest and demonstrate your qualification. And that is where they will be able to rank your profile to be able to see it, whether it is fit for you to be able to, you know, quickly integrate yourself in the province of Saskatchewan and make a reasonable uh, uh, life for yourself and your family in the province of, of Saskatchewan. Now, now, the requested information is used to assess your eligibility. That is why I said when you create a profile, they will use to assess your in terms of your educational qualifications, among other um, I mean, your professional experience, how long you have had or acquired that experience. Those, those are the things they want to see in your profile. And at the end of the day, based on the uh, information provided, that is what they will use to grade your application. Now, it determines whether your submission can be in, uh, entered into the International Skilled Worker Expression of Interest System. Individuals with skill in demand in the Saskatchewan labor market are selected through the international skill worker expression of interest form. Now, these are the things they are looking for uh, for this particular uh, submission. This skill include the workers tied to the province, work experience, and language skills. And mind you, in Canada, English and French are, are, are mostly the language of instructions, but you know, particularly English. That is language of instruction. But if you are, if you are also skilled at speaking French, of course. It will also enhance your profile, okay? 
Now, that is that. Now, not all applicants who submit an expression of interest for international skilled workers will receive an invitation to apply. Okay. Now, when you when you have submitted an expression of interest and based on the profile that you submitted, if it meets what they are looking for, they will immediately grade your application. And if you score sixty points and above, they will immediately send you what is called an expression of interest to apply. Now, that, of course, we according to them with. With, with, with detailed necessary information that you need to follow step by step for you to be able to submit for the next phase of the permanent residence opportunity and for you to be able to acquire a work permit uh, opportunity or visa for this pathway. Now, uh, so not all applicants who submit an expression of interest for international skilled worker will receive an invitation to apply for the PIS, PCIS. There are no limits to the number of people who can submit an expression of interest. So everyone is eligible to apply, but applicants can only have one profile in the system. So you cannot create a, a different profile using different email because at least your name and international passport number will figure it. We will, will figure it. We figure you out, and at the, at the end of the day, their system you will be uh, disqualified. Now, this is what you need to submit an expression of interest system. Now, your international passport, your date of birth, if you have an immigration representative, so you can either have one, it is not compulsory, it is not even going to improve your score point, okay? Now, but you, they, they, they are not going to deter you from having one or having an immigration uh, representative to assist you in submitting your expression of interest. So if you are a skilled worker looking to live and work in Saskatchewan, if you have a job offer, if you have been accepted into the Express Entry Candidate Pool of Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada. So these are the information they want to then. What is your occupation? So in here, you will be able to see the list of in-demand occupation list. So and at the end of the day, you'll be able to see if your occupation fits into the in-demand occupation list. And that is when you can use it to submit your expression of interest. If you have an evaluation of diplomas, don't forget there's something called equivalency, which is uh, if you if you have a foreign degree, they want to see if your foreign degree is equivalent to their own. So you have to you know submit for equivalency. Okay. Now, if you have document from a regulatory body in English or assessment body in and your score. So in here, you will be able to see based on the different information, degree, professional experience. Among other things, what your score will be at the end of the day, you can, you know, you can click on here to generally have an idea of that. But I, I think I will show that to you as well because that particular point cut across the three opportunities that I want to talk about today. And of course, you can also read different um, expression of interest systems, how it works, when you've submitted, when they will get back to you, how you can submit for the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program after you've received an invitation to apply. So you have different information in here that you can, you know, further in engage yourself in, okay? But like I said, you have to submit an expression of interest first with the relevant information embedded into it. And at the end of the day, that is when you will not determine or send you an invitation to apply for the permanent residence opportunity. And of course, you can also engage yourself with different information in here. So uh, your invitation to apply and every other information, you will find them here. Okay, let's quickly go through some, uh, let's quickly check another different pathway, okay? This one is called skilled international workers, profession in demand. There are some particular profession in the province of Saskatchewan that are in demand. So if your profession falls within this category, you can also apply for the permanent residence opportunity here you do not need to submit an expression of interest opportunity you just need to uh, you know create a profile and submit all the required documents that is you know are required from you and then if you're if you're nominated for the program they will send your candidacy to the federal government then you will be issued a work permit now let's quickly check some of the uh, some of the informations that are essential in here now the eligibility these are the people that can apply if you live outside of canada you are eligible if you live outside of Canada or have proof of legal status in Canada. If you are not an asylum seeker, you can apply. If you have obtained at least 60 of over 100 points in the PCIS evaluation system, which I will show to you uh, shortly, that is the evaluation system that I'm talking about for those who want to, first of all, submit an expression of interest, who do not have a job, okay? But in here, if your profession is among the list of professions that they are looking for, okay, 
you can also submit directly to the PCIS system to you know get your uh, profile graded and if it's above 60 points then you can apply now of course they have a language um, test i mean sorry they have a language requirement as well which of course you can also check the list of um, um, uh, language requirements for english and for french okay now and if you are if you have completed post secondary education training or apprentices apprenticeship comparable to what is found in Canada, which of course I talked about the equivalency. So whether you have a BSc degree, HND degree, master degree, or post-secondary education, vocational opportunity, or any, just submit it for equivalency for them to be able to determine its equivalence in the Canada educational system, okay? And of course, you can also engage yourself with different informations and how you can submit your application, okay? So like I said, this does not require that you uh, submit an expression of interest first before you receive an invitation to apply based on the score of your profile, okay? Now, and that is that for the skilled international workers, profession in demand, okay? They have different opportunities as well, but the same application platform is created for any choosing route that you want to go to. Now, let me quickly talk about briefly the last or the third options here today, in-demand occupation and express entry requirements, of course, which is also similar to the one that I talked about earlier. And also, you also have to check which occupation are excluded from the in-demand occupation in the express entry requirement for the province of Saskatchewan. So if your knock code, particularly relating to your occupation, is among the list that are already here, you, you are not uh, eligible, you cannot apply for that. And now, how to determine the national occupational classification code associated with your occupation, you can check them here. Now, let's quickly look at the, let's quickly look at the, um, um, the, 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 the job opportunity that are not eligible to apply for some of this. Now, these are the excluded occupation lists for the Saskatchewan immigrant, immigrant nominee program, which of course is for express entry category and the occupation in demand category, which of course I talked about, it, um, which is for in demand occupation here yeah, and express entry requirement, okay? This as the job that have been excluded from the program. So there are, you know, there are very many of them you can, um, you can at your, you know, uh, I mean, at different time, there are very many of them. At different time, you can try to engage each one of them. I'm not going to read it to you. The list is very many. So if your occupation, uh, if your occupation is among what has been stated here, you should not uh, bother to use it to apply for any of the choosing routes or any of the choosing permanent residence pathway that I've talked about. I've talked about three. Okay, the first one is the. The first one is the expression of interest system for international skilled worker. The second one is the skilled international workers profession in demand, in demand. And the third one is the in demand occupation and express entry requirement. Okay. Now let's quickly check how your uh, profile is assessed and graded. Okay. Now, like they said here, you need at least 60 points to be able to apply for the PCIS, which is the permanent residence opportunity for you to be able to submit your applications for nomination, for them to be able to issue you a, uh, a, a, a work visa and submit and recommend your application for the, to the federal government for uh, permanent residence opportunity for both you and your family. You need your profile need to at least score 60 points. And these are the list of, I mean, these are, these are ways in which your profile Needed, okay. Factor one, labor market success. There are some essential factors that determine whether you'll be successful in the labor market. The first one is what is called education and training. Education in terms of professional educations like BSc, MSc, HND, and the likes, PhD, okay. And then there's another one that's called vocational training, okay. They, are, they have different ways in which they grade each of the education that you have and the, the, the corresponding point that follow each of the degree and education that you have. For master's uh, or doctoral degree, Canadian equivalency, that is 23 points, bachelor degree, or at least a three-year degree at the university or college, that is 20 points, 
trade certification, which is vocational trading, that is 20 points. If you have Canadian equivalence diploma, maybe ND and the likes, that is 15 points. Of course, you have to, you know, um, um, uh, um, um, check for equivalence for any degree that you have. So um, that, that is 12 points. Then with respect to your experience, now, if you have your work experience must relate to the, to the job you have put on your applications when you create an expression of interest or for, for both to get an invitation to apply or for the permanent residence opportunity and the nomination. Now, one year of work experience equal to 12 full months. Now, work experience in the five year prior to application submission date. So if you have five years experience, that is 10 points, four years experience, eight points, blah, 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 up to one year's experience, that is two points. Now, be in the six to 10 years prior to application sub submission date. If you have five years experience, that is five points, four years experience, four points, you know, and the list goes dots. Now, language ability, okay? If the, with respect to English qualifications or, I, or French, if you have, for instance, IELTS and some other recognized English language proficiency, depending on the anyone that you have and its equivalent, if you check the to equivalence, that is what we determine what point will be allocated for the language proficiency. And of course, your age is also very important. Between 18 to 21 years, you have 8 points, 20 to 34 years, 12 points, and then 35 to 45 years, you have 10 points. So which means if you are between 22 to 34 years, you have the higher point in the, in the system. But if you are more than 50 years old, you have the zero point. Now, the maximum point factor that you can receive in this place is 80, okay? And the factor two, which is your connection to Saskatchewan labor market and adapt adaptability. This one is talking about if your occupations or professions are currently in demand, you have a higher chance of getting a good point in the system when they are grading you. The following points are for the employment offer subcategory. High skilled employment offer from a Saskatchewan employer that is good 30 points. The following points are for occupation in demand and Saskatchewan express entry subcategory. So there are other, all other jobs that fall into the occupation in demand and Saskatchewan express entry subcategories like uh, like like edge workers, plumbers, carpenters, and some other jobs that fall into the occupation in demand not code. It's twenty twenty point. For you straight away then if you have past work experience in saskatchewan that is five point extra and the past student experience in saskatchewan that is another five points for you maximum point that you can score here is 30 and overall you have you have you ha you have to at least score 60 over 100 okay now that is that now this is where you can submit your application you know finally this is where you can submit your application Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program, okay? If you already have a, uh, a login details, you create a login. If you do not have a login details, you create an account with, you know, the relevant information. Like I said, if you create a multiple uh, um, uh, profile on their system, they will fish you out because your international passport will is unique for every individual. So if your international passport is detected in with different profile, you're automatically disqualified. So this is where you can create a profile. And like I said, I've talked about the different information that they want to see in your expressions of interest. And I've also talked about the assessment um, eligibility, what they want to assess in your profile. Then I've also talked about the expression of interest system for international skilled workers. And I also mentioned the skilled international workers professions in demand, the different profession that are in demand that you can use to get your uh, profile nominated for the permanent residence opportunity and obtain the work visa in the province of Saskatchewan and also talk about the in-demand occupation and express entry requirement. These are different information. I only put them briefly so that I will not bore you on this video and I will, I will provide the link or the, uh, the link of this website on my video description or on this video description. So you need to engage each of these informations and you know gather extensive information before you make your applications. Okay, I, I think the essential thing that you need to know is what I've talked I've talked about. Of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can ask them on the um. Uh, I mean, we can drop them on the video description. And if you want to get, I mean, because not all the information can we provide to you adequately. 
you can use some of their uh, uh, contacts in here to get or gather any essential information. They have email, they respond to email very swiftly. Okay, you can you know engage with them and send them an email to be able to gather any other information that you want clarification on. Okay, so this is uh, another opportunity that we want to talk about today. And uh, I think we've talked about the job opportunity that I excluded already from the express entry category and the occupation in demand category. So, and I've said that uh, uh, one of the opportunity, you do not need to have a job. You just need to submit an expression of interest. And then, um, you know, and of course, if as long as your uh, professions or occupation is not among the list of excluded professions, which you can look through in this place, okay? And we've talked about the different express entry opportunity, different, um, skilled international workers profession that you can you know, look into and the different eligibility criteria that you must meet before you can submit your application. And generally, each of them require that you create a profile and based on your profile, you must score at least 50 points for you to be able to, uh, for you to be eligible or for your applications to be considered for the next phase, which is the recommendations of your applications or your, your candidacy to the federal government for panel for permanent residence opportunity and for the issuance of the work visa, okay? So thank you very much. Once again, this is Takba with your days. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to this channel so that by the time we drop opportunities like this, you will be the first person to get notification. Also follow us on our social media platform, okay? Love you very much, my viewers and my subscribers. Thank you very, very much once again for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.